Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm actually gonna show you my seed collection. The reason why I wanna show you that today is because it's time to start thinking about your fall monsoon garden if you're in the Arizona area. Now other people who may be just now kind of starting their spring gardens, we just fall a little bit ahead because we're so hot here. <laughs> so uh, if you're again uh, in the Arizona area, I'm in the Phoenix area. So now we're kind of trying to figure out what we're going to plant for the monsoon grow season and it's time to start seeds like tomatoes and peppers it's a little early for tomatoes but i'm gonna go ahead and get those started so i can baby those guys and get them ready for hopefully a successful crop in the later months so let's take a look at the seed collection this nifty little box is from michael's so you can find this online um, it's easy to just order that and either you could do an in-store pickup this is a photo organizer now I believe I got this on sale for $14.99 and then of course you know they always have those sales where you can get additional percentages off. So I believe all in all this cost me about $12. I really recommend this because then you can get a label system and you can do different types of labels depending on your needs. So here just real quick I have carrots and roots, peppers, tomato, leafy greens, squashes. That's going to include your winter green or winter squash, summer squash, um, and miscellaneous there. Okra, some fruits, herbs, flowers, which both of these are flowers actually. And I want to get a separate container for flowers because there's just too many. Cucumbers, brassica family. This is my trades, which we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Corn and other, and I put other because peanuts are in here as well. Beans and peas and melons. So let's take a look at what we have in each one of these categories. All right, moves you to a little bit different of an angle so that way I can use both hands here. <laughs> so we are gonna start with melons. The first one we have here and a lot of these names I'm not going to be able to pronounce very well because uh, a lot of these do come from other countries. Uh, but this is one from India. It's the Madhu Ras Rajasthan honey. I'm not sure. <laughs> but this is a very, very yummy. I'll hold it back here so you guys can see. Um, supposedly a very delicious sort of cantaloupe. Now, if you're watching this video in current time, and we're still in June, July area, uh, you can still go ahead and plant some cantaloupe varieties right now. So, and it's best to just put these right in the ground. We don't wanna start them. Okay, so I'm gonna try to run through these and not go over every single one, but this is Art Combs Ancient Watermelon. This was actually discovered here in Arizona. I do have that growing, growing currently. Kaho watermelon. This is one that I'm super excited about from Japan. Also growing that one this season. Hamby watermelon. Another sort of cantaloupe is Kajari melon. I'm excited about that one. I do have two pretty rare watermelon varieties from Japan. It's Silver Yamato and Yamato Cream. I've not had great success with these taking off super well, but we're gonna keep trying. <laughs> Blacktail Mountain. So these are all gonna be from Baker Creek. I'm going over those in this video. Kiku Chrysanthemum Melon. So these actually are a variety of cantaloupe um, or husk melon. And it's supposed to taste like Greek yogurt. So I have these doing very well on a trellis. I'll show that to you in a bit. Um, or in another video, and I'm very excited to try a Greek yogurt tasting melon. All right, so, and that, I have a couple other 
trades in here, but all that fits into one of these photo boxes. All right, next we're gonna move into beans. So we have this red bean, red Indian bean. This one is more for a dried bean. Purple teepee. Very common variety is your blue lake bush. Black turtle black beans. Asian wing beans. Chinese long beans or asparagus beans. And then peas for fall. We do have a sugar magnolia tendril and a king tut pea. All right, so those are the beans and peas. Now, as a part of my other, I do have some red soba. You'll notice that I do have a lot of Japanese variety of foods. I do love Japanese food and I'm really interested in it. So <laughs> I'm trying a lot of those uh, varieties. I have strawberry corn. So this is for popcorn. And then I have these pinstriped peanuts that are currently growing. Now for my brassicas, I do wanna show you that some of them are a little bit mixed up and not true to the brassica family, but they are sorted as best as possible. Uh, so I will have some, of the, some things in here like asparagus that's not a brassica, but I do have it in this category. Okay. I've got some, this is more of like a long stem. Um, instead of having a giant stalk, or sorry, a giant uh, head for broccoli, you mostly harvest the stalks. Some cabbage, large varieties of cabbage, broccoli, and another variety of asparagus. Now again guys, the purpose of this video is just to kind of show you my collection here. I'm not really trying to go into a whole lot of recommendations or anything like that. Just more of like an unboxing, but for a collection I already have. <laughs> And then just so you guys know, um, all of these seeds were purchased between a couple months ago and last October was my first order. So this has been kind of an ongoing collection over the last couple months. And you will notice if you're watching this in current time due to the pandemic, if you go to the Baker Creek website, rareseeds.com, there's not a whole lot of selection left. Um, just again, kind of due to the pandemic, but I want you to see what I have and get some ideas of some new interesting things. Or maybe you see something like, ooh, I never heard of that before. And so it'll give you an idea to kind of put this, uh, put like a list together. That way when they are able to get their restock, then you can go on and order some of these varieties. So we're gonna move on to cucumbers. We do have this long Japanese, crispy sort of cucumber. Dragon's egg cucumber, which I definitely recommend for a kid's garden. However, it is a little bit tricky to get these started, so I have not been very successful with them. I do have a Richmond green apple. Of course, being in Arizona, we have the Armenian long cucumber. West Indie Burgerkin, that was something I discovered from Jake Mace, if you've watched any of his videos. And then the Mexican Sour Gherkin. I'm not gonna go over flowers with you in this video just because I have so many and it's a little bit different of a category, uh, but I do have flowers like nasturtiums and actually I'm not gonna go over herbs with you as well because this box is so full and there's so many herbs and that's just gonna have to be a whole new video. All right, so some interesting fruits that you can um, grow. Now this is a Narahia, Naranhia. I just say Naranjilla, just cause I know that's not correct, but. So this one I had as a start and it's super spiky, so it would not be a kid-friendly um, plant. New Hanover Ground Cherry. This one, I believe, I do not have growing currently. Of course, Aunt Molly's Ground Cherries. Mary Niagara Ground Cherries, which I do have those growing. Cape Gooseberries, which if you do find um, gooseberries or ground cherries uh, in the store, more than likely it will be the Cape Gooseberry, which is quite interesting to me because I believe these are like the, le like the least sweet version of your ground cherry. So I'm kind of interested as to why. Now this one's just labeled ground cherry, but this is in fact a strawberry husk ground cherry. Dwarf Tamarillo. Okay, 
this one is is a tree um <laughs> and it's quite interesting so i'm gonna do a whole video on a lot of these different varieties in the future so definitely feel if you want to hang out and see some of these growing here in my area or just growing at all definitely please subscribe and uh, i'll show those to you as we move forward so i through a lot of trouble have finally gotten a tree to flower for the dwarf tamarillo so i'm super excited to be able to showcase that and show you how I was able to get that one to work. Moving on to okra. We've got Jing orange okra. So we also have the red burgundy and Burmese okra. So, and again, the purpose of this is just to kind of show you that, you know, there's so many different varieties of okra. It's not just okra. So I really encourage you to branch out and try some new varieties that you've never tried before. Okay, so we're moving on to squashes. This is gonna be a large category. This is a Yokohama squash. I did get a small one of these that came through my spring season. Uh, it's gonna be time to plant these again here in a couple months. So I hope to get some more actual size uh, squash. Lady Godiva pumpkins. Honeyboat Delicata. Supposedly a really great winter squash. Lemon squash, which are just beasts of plants. <laughs> and then Gallo de Eisen. I don't know. I don't speak. Well, I do speak a little bit of French, but I'm not sure how to say this one. <laughs> we were able to also get a successful small pumpkin uh, in the spring season. So we're excited to uh, cook that up. And we're going to grow some more this fall as well. All right, and last but not least, we have the Shishigatani. This is a crazy looking double gourd winter squash. Um, now this one, along with the Yokohama squash, are quite rare. Um, they were lost for a long time. And the other great thing about rareseeds.com is that they all have a story. All of their seeds, the way they've been discovered or rediscovered, uh, it's just very interesting to read about and it's just such a such an honor and a great opportunity to be able to try all of these different varieties that most people have never even heard of or ever seen before. Moving on to leafy greens. I probably should have put eggplant in the brassica other section, but I do have a ping tongue eggplant that's doing really well right now. I'm just going to try to breeze through these pretty quickly because there's a lot of leafy greens that I have. We've got uh, Komatsuma, Komatsuma Tender Green Mustard. And this was a great reminder here. So with every order, you do get at least one free seed packet from Rare Seeds. So that's just a great bonus that they're willing to give back in some sort of way for your purchase. And they do have free shipping through the United States um, with every order. So this is a red type of, not even gonna try to pronounce that, lettuce. Little Jim, tiny little heads of lettuce. We got another free one here, Paris Island. Looks like a romaine of sorts. Ben Haoshi Mizuna. Kale, Thousand Island, Thousand Head. New Zealand spinach. Tatsoi, Yerokuo lettuce, not sure I really liked this one too much, it was kind of um, sappy. Riffwood Bistro Bronze lettuce, another free seed is a Butter Crunch, and Purple Lady Bok Choy. Very cool little plants, the Purple Lady Bok Choys. Carrots and Roots, I'm just going to run through these really quickly again here. I got a free Amarillo Carrot from Baker Creek from one order. Hishiko Bunching Onion. Got a large type onion. This is Ailsa Craig. Uh, Tokenashi Turnip. Purple Plum Radish. Amarillo Carrot. French Breakfast Radish. Ox heart carrot, I highly recommend you grab this carrot. This is a really cool, short, squatty, thick carrot. I've loved, I love, love, love this one. There's a red core carrot, a black carrot, 
a black nebula carrot, those anthocyanins, Kyoto red, cosmic purple, new Kuroda, and that is it for the Baker Creek carrots. I have invested myself in getting lots of carrot seeds because I cannot keep up with my son picking all of the carrots and eating them. He will ride down the sh ride his bike down <laughs> up and down the street eating a carrot. This kid. Okay, on to peppers. Lemon drop pepper. We've got a sugar rush peach. Blessia, which is a one that sold out very quickly. Um, and difficult to find. Criolla de Cocina, Cocina, Zulu. I'm trying to look for those purple peppers. Murasaki purple. So Tunisian, I'm not sure, but a really hot pepper. <laughs> Manganji, habanada, that's a heatless habanero. Jigsaw, which is a super cool plant. Fish pepper and rewa. All right, so we have one more category: tomatoes. Now you'll see. Um, well, I guess you can't really see, but <laughs> you probably could see uh, at the beginning that I do have a lot of small bags here. I'm gonna go over where those came from and how you can invest a little bit to get some seeds to start but how you can really optimize how much money you're spending on seeds and how you can increase the variety for a lot less than just buying packets of every single variety or seed that you would want to grow. So I will make another video on that very soon, so please stick around. And again, don't forget to subscribe and that video will be out here in the near future. Okay, now on to tomatoes. First up, this is a little handful group that I'm going to be starting this weekend. We've got a white tome saw. Berries, crazy cherry, of course. White currant. I currently have these growing right now. I'm going to make a video on them specifically as well. And I super highly recommend these. If you like cherry tomatoes or if you have kids and you like sweet tomatoes, this is a just a fantastic, a wonderful producer. It's doing so well in my garden right now. I will grow this every time. <laughs> Black cherry, orange jazz, mortgage lifter has been very successful. Blueberries, meh. Chocolate chestnut, have not grown these yet. Rutgers, mushroom basket. Okay, so I totally blame Jess from Roots and Refuge Farm if you have seen her videos for this, but Dr. Witchies, <laughs> right guys? And then this is a tomatillo. It's Queen of Mil Milinalco Garden. So I'll let you know how this one is. It's supposed to be a sweet tom tomatillo. And then I do have a free uh, seed packet here of purple Russian tomato. So that is my collection of seeds from Baker Creek, rareseeds.com. Now that's not all the seeds that I do have from them, but all those are the ones that I have purchased personally. Other ones have been either gifted or traded, so I wasn't gonna go into those today. The reason why I wanted to show those to you as well is because as we go through our garden, I will kind of identify those, and so you can kind of see how they're growing as we go through them, and you can kind of compare like if you're interested in that or you see that it's growing and how interesting that it could be um, in your garden, then I definitely hope this helps you and gives you some ideas for your upcoming garden. I wish you the best of luck. If you have any questions about gardening or Baker Creek or seed starting or anything like that, please just let me know. And also please post a comment below. Let me know if the pandemic has led you to start your own garden or if you've had a garden in the past and you're rekindling your interest. I have so many people who have just started a brand new garden 
this season and it's been so wonderful for me to share this hobby and help them and provide them some new seeds and new varieties so if you're not starting if you if you don't have a garden that you've started recently but you're looking to get into it you know you can still go to just your local nursery and grab a couple starts and just start from there this is kind of uh you know a little bit more of an advanced step is just kind of really moving into some rare sorts of varieties but I definitely encourage you though whether you're a beginner garden or an expert gardener to just always get out there and try new varieties gardening is so fun it can be so rewarding and just teaches us so much about new foods and new varieties and it brings us closer as gardeners together I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video bye